Hello, welcome to Retainer Designer and Burning the Midnight Oil, episode number three. Uh, this is a, a episode with uh, Tiffany Prater of Destination Orthodontic Lab. Say hello, Tiffany. Hello. And uh, our, uh, oh, I got, let me, I'll reduce this thing down here so you don't see yourself twice. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> so let me... Uh, start off by saying I am excited to have you on because I realized I did not have I haven't had any female ortho lab owners oh, on yeah that's I've looked back and it's everybody I've interviewed or had on the show has always been male and I don't know if it's and, I, and it's not like y'all are rare because I yeah. looked I looked at the uh, the registration for our conference last year uh -huh. and it was 50 50 would you say yeah of female yeah. and male lab i mean it was a pretty good uh yeah. turnout for both female and male i mean but yeah. yet i haven't had any female lab owners on here so yeah. uh i That's thought that was uh interesting yeah uh, yeah there was a good turnout yeah so. i forgot what i said the uh the turnout was i think 60 ortho lab owners and shameless yeah. plug our next conference, March. Oh. 20th. Last weekend in March. Last weekend in March. Just go last weekend in March, 27th. I just I just got signed up to go talk at a conference in Lubbock, and it's the 27th. 26th and 27th in Lubbock uh, of October. So, oh. Uh, yeah, it's 27th and 28th of March of next year. Yes. Perfect. So... Be sure and sign up. They'll, registration will be open by the end of this year, probably. Uh, yeah. And Tiffany is secretary of the AOLP, which puts on... No, I'm secretary. You're vice president. See, I was trying <laughs> to switch that. Sorry. Uh, have the easier job. I don't know. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. But, <laughs> you know, Chris said, the president, he said he handpicked you. Yes. Yeah. That's what he claims. Yeah, he said he saw... He saw how sharp and smart you were that he wanted you to follow him up as president whenever we have elections again. Yeah, that's what he's been telling me. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't had to, I mean, it's not been a big deal yet just because it's still growing. Um, so I'm hoping, you know, we got to get back on our track of doing our uh, phone conferences and stuff. But I, haven't, I mean, it hasn't been too major of a thing like I thought it was going to be. Oh, good. <laughs> When all that happened, I was like, I don't know if I can handle this and starting a new lab and all that. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, well, let's get started with that. How did you get started in the industry? In the industry. So I went to school to become an RDA in 2008. And that's how I got in the dental world. Um, and I quickly figured out I really liked lab side of things um and so when I was in school my mom also worked for an orthodontist in South Lake Texas and they had an in-house lab and I got to go um kind of hang out with her sometimes and just watch what she did and I just loved it she was in an office making stuff with her hands um and it just looked like fun to me. And so I think that's kind of where those little bugs started of just doing lab work. And now you said just, who was the one that had the in-house lab? Um, Dr. Groves in South Lake. Okay. He, um, I think he's always, well, I don't think he does now, but he had a his lab tech assistant. Her name was Dawn. She was awesome at what she did and she made everything for him. I think, um, so that's where I kind of got to see firsthand that side of things. And then I started working, I finished school, started working in offices, kind of bounced between general and ortho. But anytime I was in an ortho office, I would always pick the doctor's brain about how to make things or what they knew. And um, so fast forward to, I guess, I mean, well, I had my son in 2010, 
And that's when I really was like, I need to start figuring out what I want to do for the rest of my life. I knew assisting wasn't going to be it. I loved it, but I didn't want to live paycheck to paycheck for the rest <laughs> of my life. So I uh, went back to school, finished my business degree, thought I was going to do, a, I don't know, business type stuff. Not own a business, but, you know, work in some big tall building in downtown Fort Worth or something. Ooh. And... and I started interviewing for things and it just nothing interested me and so I was still assisting while I was doing this and by that point I had kind of built up my hourly pay where it was decent um, and it was better than starting pay for some of these jobs that I was interviewing for so I finally was like forget this I'm, I'm just gonna figure out something to still do in the dental field with my business degree and I don't even know what it was. One day I was like, maybe I could own a lab. I really like lab work, but there was still a lot I had to learn. Right. And so that's kind of how I started Googling stuff. And that's how I came across your videos. And so I started watching your videos. And then um, I just had started a job with an orthodontist in Colleyville who wanted to help teach me things. And he helped me get through... I CDT, so you know, you know, in the state of Texas, you have to have a CDT, right. and I was I didn't have a lab of my own, so he let me use the lab in his office, and he got me connected with Scott from Precision, and I got to go watch the some of the lab techs at Scott's lab do some stuff that I had to do for the test, so I took the test. Past, wow. And then just slowly started doing all the stuff that you've got to do to have a business. So you, you passed the test first try. I did. Wow. So I did. it actually probably helped that you worked in dental and ortho as an assistant to pass the written. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I don't even actually, when I was taking the written test, I thought, there was numerous times I thought, I don't know how people would know this unless they had worked in an office or had a significant background in right. dentistry. Because, I mean, even just tooth numbers, you know, there's the general side of tooth yeah. numbers, which is one through 32, and then ortho does, you know, one through six, upper left, upper right, right. kind of stuff. And it's just a lot to do. And so that's every bit of the reason why I think I passed the first time. And then I took the written test in Georgia. I flew out there and took oh, both gosh. together. Um, and I did that only because we had family, friends that lived out there, so I could stay with them. Oh. That's where I was born and grew up, so I, I kind of wanted to go back just for a little bit. And so I went there, took the test, and then about nine months later, took the practical in San Antonio. And that was the fastest, what is it, four or five hours you have? Yeah, five hours for five appliances. Yeah, that was the fastest five hours yes, of my life. Yes, it goes I real quick. I barely finished. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We In lab school, and that was the only reason I could pass the written, because yeah. I was the same way. There's no way Yeah. working. Now, they say, oh, the fly attacking me. Uh, <laughs> they, they say, uh, you know, it, it takes, you got to have five years of attested lab experience to apply for the exam. Yeah. But then you need another, fly. <laughs> you need another, like, nine to ten years of lab experience to pass it. So yeah. you passing it on your first try is, is amazing and unheard of. Yes. Yes. Well, and I, I didn't realize after I got to talking to some people, a lot of people have to take it more than once. And so once I learned that, I was like, oh, my gosh. I mean, when I say I passed, I passed with, like, 72. Like, I barely passed, but... <laughs> it was yeah. passing, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that matters. And a lot of people don't know this. There's actually a grant you can apply for to pay for your testing. And yes. so I applied for it, and I got it. And oh. so I actually... Yeah, the actual test, I didn't have to pay for. I just had to pay for the traveling and stuff to go take it. 
but um, that was a huge blessing too because that was you know I was still working full time as an assistant and you know I forget how much it was now it's like seven hundred bucks or something oh to it's, do. it is a lot and if you got to retake it oh yeah that, and it, so yeah that's uh and I I'm I'm assuming the grant wouldn't have paid for a, a second uh, I don't think. So it might have, like, you might have been able to reapply after a year or two or something, but um, I don't remember. I don't remember all the regulations and stuff on it. I just, just kind of on a whim, like, you had to write a letter about why you wanted to take the test, and I don't remember what I put, but whatever I put, <laughs> they liked, so. <laughs> well, they probably liked your story, and... You know, well, coming from this. I know I talked about my son and how I wanted to um, be able to do this just to provide a better life for him. I just, you know, I didn't want to have to live off of government assistance right. ever and those types of things. And so that's probably why they liked him. Well, let's <laughs> talk about that a little bit. You know, okay. a single mom, you know, am if I'm right, I mean, I know you got a lot of family help, which is great. Yes. You got family around you that helps out so yeah. much. Uh, but you know, how hard is it being a single mom and running a business? And now you got an employee, which is like another kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, it's not too bad. She's actually been really awesome, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But honestly, a lot easier for me to be a single mom and own a business than be a single mom and have to work full time somewhere because very good point it you know that controlled my life and that's really a whole other story like all of that but yes I've, I've never been married um he was a surprise a good surprise <laughs> but a surprise and I was 23 which you know wasn't terribly young but I was not prepared um and so I, after he was born, you know, I had a lot of support from my family and stuff. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> um, you know, my parents, I, they've been incredible. They're every bit of the reason why we've been able to do what we can do. Um, my brother, tons of friends and stuff, but I, um, I don't know, like, yeah, that was just, that was a very crazy time for sure. <laughs> so, um, I was working at like 50 hours a week. And then when I decided to go back to school, I would go to school at night after working. So I didn't really get to see him a whole lot for a while, which really sucked. But I just knew that it was a season and it wasn't always going to be like that. And I was doing it so that I could eventually spend more time with him. So, yes, owning a business in itself is pretty much a 24 seven thing. I mean, I'm always thinking about stuff, but I get to be a part of his day. Like I, if there's a school activity, I can go. I don't, yes. you know, I don't have to ask for time off. I don't have to, you know, wait on someone to let me go. I can go. And then I get to pick him up from school every day. He doesn't have to go to daycare. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been incredible being able to be self-employed full time now and, you know, getting to be a mom. <laughs> I like the, I was trying to find the picture of, of him doing, uh, your, where you're, where you're at in your lab. Uh, you're oh. next to, uh, uh, tabletop game maker. Then they, uh -huh. they let him take apart all the little, uh, figures or something like that, that he was oh. doing during the summer. Yeah. I don't remember where there's a picture somewhere. I don't remember what it was posted on. But yeah, he's been a big part. This summer, he got to go to work with me a lot when I had him, um, which he actually kind of liked. I wasn't real sure how he was going to feel about that, but um, he learned how to pour acrylic in some of these silicone oh. molds, and he had a lot of fun with that because I had a lot of stuff that I had acquired from when Don retired, and, you know, I use JBC acrylic all I use and so there was a lot of other stuff from other companies that I um had never used so I kind of let him use that stuff to make fun little designs right. and, and oh fun uh, so 
so yeah, he enjoyed that. And then, you know, he just enjoyed being like, sometimes I'd give him little jobs to do, like cleaning out lab bins or whatever. Obviously he'd, you know, make a few bucks. And so he thought that was cool. Um, so yeah, it was fun this summer to have him be a part of things. And he obviously goes with me to do drop off and pickups. And um, some of the offices, the front desk ladies just love him. <laughs> uh, I gotta, now I got to tell you a story. When I first met Jackson, it was on a video chat like this. We were having AOLP, and uh, you introduced him to me. And he's like, oh, this is Cade. Uh, say hi. And he goes, that's Cade? I'm not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, who is this kid? <laughs> yeah, well, I think I had probably told him. Like, I know he's seen some of your videos, too, because, you know, I'd watch him, like, at home after work or whatever, and he'd be sitting with me, and I'd show him, like, this is how you bend this wire. This is how you do this design. So, yeah, but, yeah, he's got lots of personality. Yeah. yeah so, that well, let's talk about your lab. Um, it, now, when you very first started, you were in a little tiny, we were actually going to compare tiny little labs, <laughs> yeah. and now you've outgrown me, and so... I, uh, I, let's see if I can pull up some of the pictures of this amazing lab you have now. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I, I'll be building a new lab next year. Yeah. Uh, uh, we bought some land, and so we'll, oh, cool. yeah, we'll be building a new lab, uh, in a separate building. Right. And uh, so I'm gonna be taking some cues from you, uh, <laughs> to see how you got everything laid out. I just, I think it's great. A, it's a, it looks like a perfect size for for your lab. It is. It's actually, yeah, how all that even panned out was just, you know, it's just funny how just in the last, I don't know, eight, nine years, just how pieces fall into place that things that, you know, happened five years ago that I was like, okay, whatever. But now it's like, oh, this is why that happened. And so, um, yeah, my... Old that it's out in the garage. I would take you out there, but I don't know if it's my computer's gonna handle that. Oh. Um. But yeah, it's still out there. It was. I think the measurements on it are like four feet by eight feet. It's very narrow and long, and that's just what I made work for. You know, you, the first. You know, you make do. You know, everybody can see yeah. um, my little work dirty workshop here and studio slash everything and uh, yeah it you make do with what you have until you can take the next step yes and that's every bit like you know i knew while i was growing my lab and this was before you know i had met don and acquired his stuff but i knew i didn't want to be strapped on paying rent for my lab like i just wanted it and I wanted it to be at home so I could work at night you know after Jax went to bed or something and so yeah I look at it now and I'm like how in the world did that work in here <laughs> it's so tiny <laughs> yeah I kind of wonder the same thing if if uh if I'd be like how in the world did I get anything accomplished in here but then you walk in you're like this little closet is my income yeah you know, this is oh, yeah. letting me stay home yep I think my wife will not let me move the lab outside the house anymore because she likes being able to come in. Oh, and yeah. Work. Uh, yeah, there's pros and cons to it, obviously. But, yeah, it's, you know, it was, I knew when I moved into this house that that would be something I would eventually do. And, you know, my dad pretty much did the whole thing. Um, I'd actually, I was up in Michigan one weekend for a conference when I was working for an office. We went up there for this like training thing and I came home and my garage was a construction zone and I'm like, what is happening? And my dad was like, oh, I started working on framing out your lab. So, oh my gosh. You know, it just, and so we would just work on it on the weekends until it was done. But I mean, it's insulated. It's got a vent and stuff. I mean, it's, you know, it's a great little spot. It's just little. And... So I worked in that for, you know, all of last year and then, you know, fast forward to Don retiring and he handed over his account and I was not prepared for what that was. Like <laughs> Now, I want to say I made the introduction. 
You did. I did. You did. Because Don came to me at the conference and was like, hey, I'm thinking about retiring. You know, are you, do you want to take some of the accounts? I'm like, listen, I know the perfect person. She's <laughs> actually in Fort Worth with you. And he was like, yeah. really? And so I brought him over there to you. And I didn't know if it was going to happen at one point. Uh, and then suddenly I see pictures from you and you just flood it with cases and yeah. equipment and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was, so I met him, it was last April at the conference, and yeah, it was all because of you, and um, we talked a little bit that weekend, and then I didn't hear from him for a long time, so I wasn't really sure, you know, it was going to happen either, and so finally one day I was like, I'm just going to call him and see, you know, is this still going to happen, I just need to know so I can start preparing, and he was like, yeah, but he was just, he was super busy, he had was having back surgery and stuff. Oh, man. So he and I finally met and got together December 18th last year. And he took me to meet some of his accounts. And then, I mean, he closed his doors at the end of December. So January 1, I... You were not sleeping. (laughs) No. No. I, yeah, I, for like three months, just about... I was working seven days a week, 12, 15 hours a day. There was at least one all-nighter a week. Mm. Um, it was, ugh, like, it was not fun. But I knew it was just for a season. And I knew, so by this point, I already had the lease signed or, you know, for this new spot. I just didn't have time to move stuff, like, get it set up. And so I just kept thinking, like, I just got to get that up and going so I can hire someone and this will help. And so, again, my parents helped a ton. They were over there painting and setting things up. And my dad, actually, those lab benches that are in there now, they were dawned. And they're probably, I don't know, 20-something years old. And they were, you know, they were worn and they were kind of this beige color and just had a bunch of stuff across the front of them. And so my dad got in there and cleaned them up and repainted them. And I mean, they looked incredible. They They look amazing. They look brand new. Yeah, they do. And I mean, my dad is a very detail oriented person. Like he even painted the screws on like some of the stuff. Oh my. You don't have to do that. But (laughs) (laughs) he went all out for them. So, and those suckers are heavy. Like, those metal, I mean, if we ever have a tornado, that's where <laughs> I go is under those benches. Because yeah. they, uh, they, everything will be gone except for the benches. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's going to move those. They are heavy. So, um, and yeah, they help do and, all of that. And so y- you were in the smaller lab and you got started doing Don stuff and then you finally got to move here. Um, yes. And, uh, I mean, the color scheme, I think somebody asked you online, you know, uh, I love the color of the lathe, as you can see uh-huh. in the picture, and you're, you're green and blue, and it reminds you of? The beach. The beach, <laughs> which, where'd you get the name of the lab? Destin, Florida. So, Destination Orthodontic Lab, there's definitely a tie into that, um, that's another whole other story too. Like Destin, Florida has always been a really special place for me. I've been going there almost 20 years now, um, at least one time a year. And the beach just makes me happy. And so I was like, you know what? If I can't live at the beach, I want a lab that's decorated like the beach. I I think you accomplished it. It I did. I I love it. Um, And I also wanted a place that was fun. Like, I knew at some point I would be hiring somebody and, you know, no offense, but like some other labs are dark and they're Mm -hmm. just, you know. Yeah, don't don't look behind me. (laughs) Well, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you would probably kill to have like a big window or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no windows here. Or or my window's covered with a window unit or an air conditioning unit. Yeah, so a lot of the thought process, too, was creating a place that people enjoyed coming to work, not just me. Um, So I wanted it to be fun and bright and just those kinds of things. So I think, 
you know, for the most part. Unless you just don't like bright colors, then you'll hate my lab. <laughs> Well, um, for the most part, I think people like them. Well, let's transition into that. You got your first hire, and I think mm-hmm. you have been one of the lucky ones yeah, with the I type of so person too. you hired. Because it sounds like she's amazing and a go-getter. And yeah. uh, I'm not saying it because yeah. she could be watching this live stream. But, hi. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how did you find her? So I found her... Whenever I had posted something on my personal Facebook page that I was needing to hire somebody, and I tagged all my people in the dental field that I have worked with in the past or something, and so this kind of goes back to something that happened, you know, a long time ago that played a part in this, but I didn't know it was going to play a part in this. So I had gotten done working at an office, and I started working for the temping agency here called Dental Directions, and... I, the girl that would staff the assistants, her name was Audra, or is Audra, and she saw my post, and she sent me a message, and she said, I might have somebody for you. So she connected me with this guy named Caesar, who was kind of doing what I was doing, but wanting to open a denture lab. So he was working as an assistant, and then on the side doing stuff for dentures. And so he and I got together and chatted a few times. And, um, I mean, at that moment, I just needed someone that would help with trimming and polishing. I wasn't looking for someone to do everything. Um, so after he and I talked some, he was like, you know, I think my wife would be a really good fit for you. So that's how I met her. She, um, her name's Karina and she had done some things for him, like polishing and stuff, but, that was about it. So, um, and enough of familiarity with the dental lab to not be shocked walking right. in. Yeah. And, and she go knew on. what equipment was and like hand pieces and lathes and things like that. Um, so she, March 18th was her first legit day. And truthfully, like the first few weeks she spent setting up the last, things in the lab and getting things organized and I was still kind of working from home getting stuff made so she helped a ton with that and she does from home she has a, I'm sure there's a name for all this stuff but she makes those chalkboard signs that you see like first day of school oh, and yeah. that kind of stuff and she she has a really cool style it's a little bit different than stuff I've seen just from what other people do. So she's got the artistic brain for sure. So she, you know, once we got everything moved in there and I was working out of there full time, she really started doing the trimming and polishing and she picked that up really quick. Um, And so she's been doing that. And then just in the last few weeks has really started doing all of the acrylic. Um, You know, she, has learned how to do some of the designs, but what I like about her is because she has this artistic brain, she just thinks of things differently than I do. And so even that last week we had one come through that wanted stripes with, you know, two colors. And me, I'm just going to do stripes, like, right. you know, up and down, just basic. But she did them, like, diagonal, and it just oh. looked really cool. It was just different, and it, I would have never have thought of that. So, um, yeah, I think she's once we really get her like up and go, I mean, there's still things that she's, you know, going to learn and get more comfortable with, but she's been good and she's consistent and she works hard. And yeah, I got lucky with not yeah. having a nightmare of, <laughs> of <first fire. laughs> well, and you know, I think there was a big complaint and on the last burning the midnight ortho, uh, you know, I interviewed Chris and oh, yeah. he, we we were just talked about somebody complaining about one of their uh, employees and and Steve and I Steve Zara and I talked about it and Chris talked about it and so it's nice to have a hey there are really good ones out there and yeah. well and actually I can't remember her name Deborah uh, it starts with a D uh, she posted it on the Facebook group uh, about how she has a right hand person um, yeah. that you know, is there on time and works hard. So it looks like you found your right hand person first and then now you can hire the millennials. And I guess you're a millennial. I can't, I can't say that. Oh, I 
I mean, I'm like right on the verge, I guess. So, yeah, she, yeah, I've told her, I'm like, I'm afraid you set the bar really high. If I ever have to hire someone else, like, I'm going to expect them to all be this smooth and simple. And I know that's not the case, but, you know, I think too, like, as a business owner, obviously when I was in school finishing my business degree, there was a lot of classes on management and just people and, you know, you also have to remember they're people too. Like they're not employees. So yeah. like they there's other things like she's got children and mm-hmm. all of that. And I know for me, like I always hated working in a place where if my kid was sick and then I felt guilty, you know, like the boss was a jerk or whatever. And I've always like, I don't want that. Like if your kid's sick, by all means stay home. It's all right. We'll figure this out, you know, or if, you know, school's out or whatever, like, if you need to bring your kid to work, just bring them. Like, there's iPads, there's, you know, things to do. So I think that's something, too. Like, I just want a place where whoever I end up hiring again, you know, in the future, too, I don't want it to be stressful. Like, I want you to enjoy where you work. I want you to come in and love what you do and love who you work with, too. So, yeah, well, and I think you're going to have a, a perfect uh, – perspective because of where you started where you came from being a mother being a single mother having sick kids working for other people you're going to be a little more lenient now you're going to probably demand they work and they work hard when they're there yeah but you want to give them you know the opportunity for family because i mean you're almost family with your employees as much as y'all are together yeah so it's uh it's two different families now. You got to take care of your first family and then yeah. come back to the second family when you're healed up. And I want to yep. say Jay Tyler. Uh-huh. He just uh, in the chat said, hey, guys, I think I speak for the whole community and saying we are very proud of you and your stellar progress. So he's very <laughs> proud of you. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it- Even Jay, like the first conference I ever went to, I met him and bought his videos that he has. And, you know, it's just like, I'm still learning stuff. You know, it's still fun to me to watch other people and how they do things. Cause sometimes I'm like, I don't know why I didn't think of that. Like that's so much better and so much easier to do it that way than how I've been doing it. So his videos have been really awesome. Karina has them. She's been watching them. Oh yeah. Um, I saw Josh Dobson say, Hey, we invited Jay Tyler to our, lab for training but he doesn't know it yet yeah. <laughs> it was his videos yeah 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 his videos have been really good like they're a good they thing to started have, so, a lot of people you know. owning their own lab uh uh-huh. and so it, it's it was great to have him at the conference and hopefully he can come back soon uh, i know i hope he can and maybe he'll get to come this year because it's a different weekend i know he said there was something that he always has to do the weekends that it's been so maybe oh sabrina will work out said her name is Carrie. I was totally off. The one that posted about the employee is Carrie. Not, oh. I was thinking with a D. Thanks, Sabrina. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> uh, the memory is not so... Too many monomer fumes, you know. Uh, yeah, kind of it happens. People uh, late nights. Our brains just kind of... You know. Well, and that being said, you know, usually the midnight... Burning the midnight ortho, we're around midnight, we're doing it late, but... We're in a weird part of our industry right now in the calendar where we just finished the back to school rush. And so we're kind of in a little dead zone, most of us. And so we were able to do this at noon. So it's burning the midnight, burning the noon oil or ortho. Man, I totally messed up the title. (laughs) But uh, we were, you were actually said that you, one of your biggest accounts is off until Labor Day. Yeah, like after Labor Day. So. Yeah, and I'm kind of grateful because it's just been so crazy. I mean, and I still haven't finished invoices for this month yet, but even with it being a shorter month, um, it's been a lot. And, you know, this back like a week or two ago, Jackson and I went to Destin, and so he and I were gone for a couple of days. So before we left, I had to get his batch of stuff set up so that Karina could finish it and it's a lot yeah <laughs> like, I was all night bending wires and um so yeah I'm a little bit I'm ready for the break and I'm ready <laughs> to be able to 
do some of the other stuff that keeps getting put on the back burner. Like there's all these things that I want to do with the lab and like teach Karina how to do. And we just haven't had time to do it. So I'm, I'm thankful for this break. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And we get to do fun things like this. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, James Murphy, he, he uh, said, uh, I've been doing this for almost 30 years and I still watch other people work. I love it. So yeah. it, it, it's, this industry is a learning. It used to be totally different, and maybe James can attest to that. It was secretive. You know, yeah. you would you would have... I've heard stories where people are working in a, in a lab, you know, and, and they have this thing, and they're yeah. working, and somebody walks behind them, and they do this. So you can't... Really? Yeah, I've heard stories of that. They're trying to keep how they work a secret, and it, it's huh. just... It's totally changed now with the Facebook and the industry and the Association of Orthodontic Laboratory Professionals, of which yeah. you and I are board, uh, not board with it, we're board members or board of directors, <laughs> yeah, something like that. We're not bored with it. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's a great community we're building. I think you came in at a perfect time. Uh, yeah. And I never experienced that side of, you know, everyone has always been super friendly and open and, you know, even, I mean, you and I, we're both in Texas. Scott is in Texas. Mm -hmm. Like I get, you know, technically we're competition, but it's never felt that way. And even no. like with Scott, I mean, I've texted him about things. Like I needed a three-way screw a couple weeks ago and I, I text, Hey, do you have one? And he was on back order too, but he, you know, it was just, if you ever need anything, just let me know. And so, you know, it's nice to have that and know like it's not this, we're not trying to compete against each yeah. other. We're trying to support each other and root for each other. So. Yeah. I have the same stories. Uh, I don't know if you met him, uh, Rodney Fry, the lab guy, <laughs> he was at the conference. Um, yeah. he was there and, uh, he's been sending me work you know, of things that he doesn't want to do. I don't know why I get to do it, but, uh, and printing. So he's about to buy a printer and he knew I had a printer. He's like, Hey, can you print a couple things for me? Yeah, sure. You know, I'll print it up, stick it in the mail. And he, you know, he has it the next day. And, uh, even I think it's sunshine ortho lab. They're close by, um, yeah. Faye. Sorry. Hopefully you're watching. You can tell me it's Faye. Uh, but she, texted me when I had first got my 3D printer and was like, hey, I've had mine for a while. You know, if you need any help with it, let me know. And, yeah. and Or if yours goes down, send me the files, I'll print them for you. So it's, That's awesome, it's yeah. Great... I haven't had to do, I haven't bought a printer yet. Um, I use Cadmus to do that for me. And so... That's a great little system they came up with. Yeah, it's uh, actually, it's been really cool. Just it's like a networking collaboration thing. Um, and you know, they get sometimes doctors that need, you know, a band and loop or a whatever, and they just send it to me and I make it. So, but they do my printing for me. I know at some point I will have to buy a printer, but I'm <laughs> pushing that out as far as I can. Hey, I have a, a $500 discount code for you for a form three printer. So just Ooh. let me know. I can give you the code for $500 I off. Plus, it gives me five hundred dollars off <laughs> if I use it. <laughs> yes, no, that's very helpful. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't even know what I would buy. I know there's. I mean, there's so much on the market now. Um, so yeah, when it comes time, I'll let you know. But I'm hoping it's not anytime soon. Well, speaking of purchasing big equipment, how has your um, business degree helped you opening and running your business? Ooh. Um, I mean. Truthfully, this is going to sound really maybe terrible. Um, when I went back to school, I kind of went back just because I needed to finish something. I had been in college before, and I just never finished a degree. And so I remember going to the counselor, and I was like, what's the fastest thing I can finish? And she said a business degree, and I thought, okay. And so I, it's an entrepreneurship. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it is common sense. And like, I remember sitting in class and, you know, they would teach, talk about things. And I'm like, people don't know this already. Like, I mean, right. I don't know. Like it really, some of it is just basic common knowledge or it should be, I guess. Um, 
So, I mean, it's helped in a sense that, I mean, I, you know, there was things I got to do and things I did learn that I didn't know, but it does help with running a business, just the accounting side. I do all of that right now and I, I hate it, but mm-hmm. I learned how to do it in school. Um, at some point that will be getting handed over completely to somebody cause I don't want to do it. Um, so yeah, that's helped, but I think probably the best things I learned, there was one class in particular that dealt with just management, like how to manage people. And it, I remember reading stories about, um, owners and stuff that the special things they did for their employees besides just, you know, benefits and bonuses mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, I remember reading a story about a guy that had a vacation home somewhere on a beach and he allowed his employees to go stay there for free. Like, oh, that's cool. He didn't that's charge cool. them for the week. And that always stuck with me because that's obviously a goal is to have some kind of a condo in Destin, Florida at some point. And I thought, oh, that'd be really neat to be able to have that. I and mean, if I have employees that are interested in going, like just being able to be like, here, go for the week. Like you don't have to pay for the, you know, weekly side, just your travel and expenses and stuff. So, you know, things like that, I think help employee morale oh yeah Uh, totally because i know even when i was an employee and just you know the day was really busy and i didn't have time to actually go take a lunch break if you just ordered me pizza i'm good oh yeah that was great (laughs) whenever i was lab manager we were going to be working late they're like we got your dinner covered you know like it brightens your spirits you're like yay i I, we got free pizza coming and we'd we'd all stand around the open boxes and eat and stuff yeah yeah. So yeah, just things like that. Like I just remember those stories that I read in those textbooks just stuck with me. And I was like, I just want to be able to do that. I don't, you know, I want to do more than just the basics. And right now it's the basics because it's growing and, um, you know, but at some point, like I want to be able to do all the extra things for whoever works for me because they are a big reason why my business runs. I mean, at some point I hope I'm not there all the time like right yeah you know, to have people that can run it when i'm not there um so when it gets to that point like yeah y'all are responsible for that i'm not bending wires anymore i'm not doing all of this so i think you know because that's what i would want as an employee like well and one of the best quotes i got from priscilla the owner of jbc uh-huh. was you know we were i think i was talking about i was rebooting my lab at beginning of 2018 um, yeah. coming back out of management, back into lab ownership. And I was talking about business plan and all that stuff. She was like, business plans, business man, you know, she was like, just don't fail. Yeah. Just, that's your business plan is yep. do whatever it takes. Don't fail and you'll survive. And that's what I've done. It just, I just put it all out there and don't fail. Oh. And I thought that oh, was yeah. great. And you're going to have great people like Scott, you know, uh-huh. at, who, is doing where you're probably going to want to be in a few years. Yeah. Um, doing the same role. And so that, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I, I would love to be able to have a lab like him. He has, I forget how many employees, like 13 or 15. That's a lot. I don't know if I want to get to that point where I need that many people, but, um, you know, like getting to a point where I can have a few and, Everyone kind of has their own responsibilities and, you know, so we'll see. Who knows where it'll go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like you're living the dream of most moms, most single moms. You that and I get contacted a lot on, you know, my YouTube channel is like, hey, how do I get started in this? Uh-huh. Um, and I think you you've got the story. You know, you're like it intrigued you. You took your CDT exam. I kind of did the same thing. I, I was an assistant and yeah. I was an in-house lab and the doctor was like, Hey, let's open up our own lab together. I was like, let's do it. All right. Let's register with the state of Texas. All right. Yeah. Oh, you need a CDT. Oh. And so I was like, well, how do I get a CDT? And I found the school, which there's no more schools in Texas. So you were able to do this without a school. And uh, school is, a, it's two and a half years and it's the fastest way to get your CDT, but they don't exist anymore. So. No, they don't. I think, I know at the, where I took my practical, it was at the Air Force Base in mm-hmm. San Antonio. 
um, most of the people taking the test were in the Air Force, and they had gone through some kind of training program or something through the Air Force, but, yeah, I don't... Yeah, there's no civilian schools anymore uh, in Texas. They're on the East Coast, West Coast, so yeah. um, that's where you have to go, or just bite the bullet and go through it like you did. It, but yeah. again, your assisting helped uh, oh, yeah. tremendously with that because I, um, those, the written, not specialty, but the overall, you got to know all parts of dentistry. Oh yeah. Yep. And so that's, that's, amazing. well, we're coming up on close to the end. Well, <laughs> I know we talked about your future plans. Yeah. So do you have any short term, long term um, I mean, right now, now that the craziness of getting everything <laughs> gone has kind of settled, um, yeah, like I'm looking to start growing again. I wasn't really trying to market a whole lot before because I just, there was no way right. I could have done it. But now that we've kind of got a system in place and, you know, Karina, she works part-time right now. She wants to be full-time, so I want to be able to gain a few more solid account so that I can you know make that happen for her so that'll be something we work on next week when we're not strapped to the bench is getting a marketing thing going and going out to offices and talking to people and so well I think you, you've always had a great marketing head on your shoulders you know your your Facebook page and your Instagram you know I think yeah. they're, they're done perfectly uh, yeah even the logo you know great logo <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I love the logo. Um, did you do getting... a Tarleton? Yes. You, you did a Tarleton retainer. I did. You didn't see that one? I didn't Your see that one. On oh, and my wife commented on it. <laughs> and I didn't even see it. <laughs> she commented. Yeah, I've done a few schools around here, but that's that's my favorite. I love when kids pick designs and something yes. different. Um, I get bored with the pink and the clear and all of that so um that that makes me excited when i see stuff coming through and i'm always trying to think of different ways to do stuff like those things that are in there i cut those out with my cricket cutter they're vinyl oh i always wondered and, if cricket cutter would be perfect for this industry yes so that's what i use it for and so i'll do the base color really thin and then i put the vinyl on and then i actually put it in a pressure pot to get it hot so the adhesive will actually stick to the acrylic because if you don't do that the uh vinyl will like wrinkle up and pull away when you do the next layer of acrylic oh oh gotcha That's the yeah trick to that so you i do that and then i put the clear on top of it so oh and you had a birthday karina's birthday was this summer july 20 nine awesome um so yeah and so, that was just that like i want to do fun things like that like when birthdays or whatever so my son and i decorated the lab my mom helped me make or she made the um it's an oreo cheesecake Ooh. So oh she that's... Made that for her so yeah oh that's awesome yeah, yeah that, it was fun so you're just putting it right into it right into work yep Oh, I missed some of these. These are great. So, yeah, that I'm, was a pineapple. <laughs> that was a weird one. Well, I can see that. Yeah. That was the first, the only one I've, like, someone requested it, and I was like, all right, we'll give this a try, but. Oh, and speaking yeah. of marketing, see, that's perfect right there. Yep, that's uh, the front door. Um, so yeah, and that's probably, something, like, when you were talking about school, marketing, obviously, was a big thing that they talked about, and you know, being, not that I'm super young, but technology and social media is like been a big part of my life. And so that's, I don't even have a legit website. I have one that has been slowly getting built, but I've only had Facebook and Instagram. Um, so that's all I've ever used for marketing. You, that's you, a sadness. Yeah, you got to really concentrating look on your face yeah i was cleaning <laughs> off a 3d printed model the like support material or whatever all that jelly crap yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No. and that thing's like a serious power washer that they have over there so that was um 
Well, that, and you're so, getting a good idea of what 3D printer you want. All the accoutrement that goes with it. Uh, yeah. Using our fancy Texas word. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, you're, you're really gonna, you're, you got a head start, I guess. Yeah. Uh, on yes. All that. Well, and that's what's really cool about Cadmus is right now they just have one printer, but they're getting ready to buy a couple of different ones. So when I am ready to go do something, I can go over there and kind of look and actually play around. I'm such a visual person. Like I have to be hands on to <laughs> learn and figure things out. So that'll be nice when it comes time to do that, to actually go there and see it and play with some of the stuff. Yeah. So. Well, you, as we wind down, so last, you know, last I thoughts that you have, um, one thing I'd like you to speak to is you talked about seasons of your life, you know, huh? uh, talk to that female single mother, you know, out there that's in those different seasons what what was something you would have loved to told yourself while you were going through the the tough times? Oh gosh, I might start crying talking about that. Um, That's fine. I'll zoom in on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I definitely remember when I found out I was pregnant. I was definitely lost, very scared, and I just I remember thinking like, "There's no way." I'm going to be able to accomplish things like this is just too much of an uphill battle, you know, just all the things. And so I, uh, that's one thing I do hope, like I, I have such a heart for single moms. Um, and yes, I am a single mom, but I've always had a really good support system. So I've never, you know, like been at a point where I just don't have somebody to help me watch my kid or, you know, we always had food on the table. We always had a roof over our head. Like, we never went without those things. Um, so I think, you know, if I were to come across another single mom that kind of was where I was, just keep pushing. Keep, don't give up. It's going to be hard. Like, you're going to have to sacrifice a lot. And there was that when I was going to school and working, I didn't see my kid, you know, some days at all, hardly. Like, I would drop him off at my mom's, and I would pick him up, and he'd be asleep. And... You know, it sucked. That was terrible. Mm -hmm. But it is worth it now. Like, now looking back, I'm like, okay. And honestly, all that's kind of a blur. I don't even really remember <laughs> those years. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, and I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but, like, my faith in God has always oh, been yeah. a big part of my life. And, um, you know, I just, looking back on it, like, I can see God's hand in all of this. You know, like. Some people think it's stuff I've done, but I'm like, actually, like, there are things that have just fallen into place that I could not have made happen, even if I wanted to or even thought of it. You know, it was just just how things happened. And so I know this is what I'm supposed to do and where I'm supposed to be. Um, and so, yeah, if there's single moms out there that are trying to do something similar or the same thing, just keep trying. Like, don't give up. It's, there's going to be a lot of obstacles, but worth it when you get there so no, excellent yeah I, I think you'll you'll be reaching a, a big community uh, yeah I hope and, I do I hope that's always been and that's something I would love to do at some point is kind of create a non-profit to help single moms get you know there's a lot of like pregnancy help stuff but mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot for single moms after they have babies and so that's something I would love to do and I've always, but you know, I always tell people like, if you know a single mom that's struggling, bring them to me. Like, I don't know if I can help or not, but I'll try. Yeah. So, well, you're you're passing it on. You you say you're lucky to have a support system in in family. So yeah. you could, for those that don't have the support system in a family, you could create, you know, something. Uh, yeah. A support system that's not your family, but becomes your family. Right. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Because that's every bit. I mean, I don't know how I would have done anything if I did not have. a supportive family and friends and, you know, just even strangers sometimes. Like, it's just, I'm like, if I were to tell the whole story of everything, I mean, there, it's just some really cool stuff that. I think you need to start your own YouTube channel. 
Maybe someday I will. Yeah, st- start telling your story, and I think you'll have a lot of followers that are like, I'm right there on the same path, trying to get yeah. to where she's at now, and I like to see where she's at and her successes. And uh, yeah, at, because you know, you talk about your faith in God and, and how you start telling your story, and things just start it passing your CDT on the first time and going, I didn't realize how hard it was <laughs> yeah. or that a lot of people don't pass it. And then, you know, coming into contact with people that led you into this path. Uh, yeah. and, and then now you got your family support structure. You got your business support structure through the AOLP and, you know, businesses around you. So, uh, I, yeah. I think you have a great story. I was really excited for this, um, <laughs> this interview. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you could. Oh, my wife said you're a rock star, Tiffany. She's <laughs> mentioned many times. A rock star too. She mentioned many times she doesn't know how you do it uh, <laughs> or how you did it. Because I, even I'm like, hey, you want to start? Because do. she does my trimming and polishing. Yeah. And uh, I said, hey, you can uh, you can start doing acrylic. She's like, no, uh-uh. I, I'll see you do that, and I see you struggle. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. And I'll. But she. She, I think being around you guys at the AOP, you specifically, she's like, I think I want to get my CDT now. Aww. And I was like, so if I die, you can take over the lab? And she's like, no, <laughs> just out of a pride thing. Yeah. So, uh, That's cool. so, hey, uh, Sarah, you can bring Sybil in here if you want. We're going to finish this up. If she can hear, I know it's delayed like 30 seconds, so I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. Well, uh. With that being said, it's it's been an hour long interview, and I, I want to thank you for coming in and, and telling your story. And so, people can follow you on Facebook at Destination Orthodontic Lab. Just type that in. Yes. And also your Instagram. Is there any other places? Not really. I mean, that's the only two main things that I use for marketing for my lab. So. So if you're a local orthodontist. Uh, or not local. She has the ability to print your models if you're in Florida, you know, and she might pick up from you if you're in Destin, Florida. <laughs> yeah, I'm there a few months a year. I can just pick it up while I'm there. Yeah. Well, hi, come here. You want to say hi? Yeah. Talk about. Jace. Hello. Say hi. Hi, JC. JC, it's not JC. That's her cousin's JC. It's oh. Tiffany. <laughs> do I look like JC? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you helping mom? So what are, you, are you helping mom? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You like all these cameras? You're looking around at everything? She wants to see herself. She's like, where am I? Yeah. So she's a mom, too. Do you want to see her son? Mm-hmm. There's Jackson. That's her son. Oh. Put you down? Okay. <laughs> she's done. <laughs> yeah, she's done. All right, well, I'm going to end it. And uh, I want to say thank you for coming on the stream and being a part of this. And, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and we'll have you again also. And again, I'll help you with your YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> so until then. Someday I'll get to that. Until then, it's, uh, let's see, this is uh, Burning the Midnight Ortho at noon. <laughs> Episode 3 with Tiffany Prater, Orthodontic Lab. I'll see y'all all later and happy bending. Bye! <laughs>